Climate change is one of the single biggest threats facing the world today. There's an increasing sense of urgency for it to be tackled effectively. If Scotland is to achieve its target of an 80% reduction in gas emissions by 2050, then every business has a role to play, none more so than forestry. Forests can make a big contribution to climate change mitigation um, by locking up carbon in growing trees, by substituting wood for fossil fuels in renewable energy production, and by substituting wood for more carbon intensive materials in construction like steel and concrete. The forestry sector, we estimate, contributes about 800 million a year in terms of gross value added to the Scottish economy. And that's a, a contribution which is increasing. The clearest link between climate change and the role of forestry is in woodland creation. Forestry Commission Scotland has set itself ambitious targets. 25% woodland cover in Scotland by 2050. We're trying to get back to new planting levels in Scotland of about 10,000 hectares per year, which is where we've been historically, but it's slipped a bit in recent years. As we'll see, this project has not only environmental benefits, but social and economic ones as well. Modern forest management is about combining all three. A challenge for Forestry Commission Scotland is to educate a sometimes sceptical public in the business of sustainable forest management. It's natural to jump to the conclusion that cutting and felling trees has only an adverse effect on climate change, a notion Forestry Commission Scotland is keen to dispel. It's really, really important that people understand that it's a necessary part in the life cycle of a forest, although they maybe don't look as attractive to, to many people. A clear felled woodland is also an important habitat for things like nightjar. Uh, and, and so it's really, really important that we, we get the message across that, that, that this is necessary. And uh, it tends to be transient as well because we can get in, we can replant the woodlands quickly, and that then provides the next generation of woodlands for, for future people in society. Most people's perception of forest and climate change, again, probably comes from seeing the, uh, programmes about destruction of the rainforest and what that's doing to climate change. But actually we're in a, into a reforestation programme in Scotland, I guess, because um, we actually destroyed many of our native forests centuries ago, long before some of the other tropical countries even thought about it. This reforestation programme will deliver key benefits in the mitigation of climate change. Trees lock up some of the excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If Forestry Commission Scotland achieves its targets by 2050, that would lock up an additional 4 million tonnes of carbon dioxide a year, a significant contribution to Scotland's total emissions reduction. We've been using wood for construction and fuel for centuries, but seldom has its use been more relevant. Today, it's creating new business opportunities. New investment in timber processing is running at about £60 million a year. Substitution of fossil fuels through the use of wood and forestry products is an important component of Scotland's climate change programme. Timber processing yards like this will become more important in helping meet the country's forestry carbon savings target. And it places great responsibility on Forestry Commission Scotland meeting demand. We have a, a, an industry now that's built on the, the, the timber outputs from our forests, so we have to make sure that we supply reliable, accurate flows of timber into the market that, that will underpin the businesses that have come to depend on the forest resource. Power stations fueled by biomass offer an exciting alternative to the traditional fossil-fired plants. Aon Stevens Croft Biomass Power Station at Lockerbie generates enough electricity to power 70,000 homes and displaces about 140,000 tonnes of greenhouse gases every year. It burns a mixture of biomass fuels derived from forestry co-products, such as wood chip from local sawmills, and specially grown willow. In terms of the timber supply, we have been trying to make wood available for people who wish to pursue biomass. Clearly there are, there are two levels there, there's the industrial scale level, but there's a smaller scale entrepreneurs who are providing uh, wood chip to small community type schemes. One such entrepreneur is Richard Spray, owner of Pentland Plants, just outside Edinburgh. His dilemma was how to heat the two hectares of modern glass that house his bedding plants without being at the mercy of the volatility of oil prices. The answer was a 2,000 kilowatt boiler, which he installed in 2007. 
To ensure both a clean and reliable source of fuel and total self-sufficiency, Richard purchased his own wood chipper, powered by a 500 horsepower engine. Pentland Plants uses about 2,500 tonnes of wood chip a year to heat the glass houses. The benefits can be felt in the pocket and in the atmosphere. In financial, we can save about uh, £100,000 a year compared to burning oil. Um, CO2, we can save 2,500 tonnes a year of CO2 emissions. Um, and by having the chipper, we've got control over the, the volume of chip um, and particle size and moisture content. Um, so we've got more um, flexibility in that way. Times have changed from 2007, when Richard had to carry out the research into biomass energy himself. Today, Forestry Commission Scotland offers grants to local businesses to switch from a dependency on fossil fuels to biomass. It also employs a dedicated team of biomass development officers travelling around Scotland dispensing advice and encouragement to companies thinking of making the leap. In the current economic climate we're seeing a lot of businesses shifting towards uh, renewable energy, biomass installations. They're trying to increase business efficiency, reduce costs where possible. Uh, due to the current grants we have for installations across Scotland for biomass boilers and biomass supply chain, a lot of businesses are, are looking at putting in biomass. They've seen it as a good way to, to reduce their cost and also their reliance on fossil fuels. The construction industry, with its reliance on energy intensive materials like concrete and steel, is a major contributor to greenhouse gases. However, wood continues to lock up carbon after it's cut, and the energy consumption of converting wood into a finished product is considerably less than is required with steel and concrete. The Commission has launched a national forest land scheme that releases parts of the estate to benefit local communities, particularly for low cost housing. Scotland is leading the way in the use of wood in construction. 65% of new homes in Scotland use timber frames. One such building is the Commission's district office in Inverness, constructed from homegrown timber and heated with energy generated from biomass materials. And here, at the famous Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh, the Visitor Information Centre is another building made from sustainably sourced timber. It fulfills the brief of the garden's directors and trustees for there to be an iconic building with as small a carbon footprint as possible. I think the, uh, the statement that has to be made in the Botanic Garden is at the forefront of that, is to use materials that we believe uh, are functional, that do the job, but also we can see that uh, they, you know, they're going to help towards uh, you know, sustaining the, uh, the, the world that we live in. Forestry Commission Scotland is also responding to the Scottish Government's target to source 50% of the country's electricity demand from renewable sources. It's working in partnership with other organisations to identify areas of the forest estate that can be set aside for renewable energy schemes. But perhaps the greatest beneficiary of Forestry Commission Scotland's woodland creation scheme is the public. Scotland's forests contribute about £160 million a year to the tourism sector. And moreover, the role forests play in education, tackling social exclusion and improving general quality of life are all areas Forestry Commission Scotland is currently exploiting. The forests of, of Scotland are very young and, and they will, as we restructure them, provide a very interesting habitat, very interesting place to, 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 to go and be and enjoy. And there are a number of routes that we're looking to do that, such as the Forest Education Initiative, which is trying to get out to schools and to educate young people about their environment, their surroundings, and the, the positive things that they can do and to enjoy and make full use of that environment. One of the challenges facing Forestry Commission Scotland is communicating to the public how the work it's doing will benefit not just the environment, but the many local businesses that depend on the forest estate and, of course, visitors will want to enjoy it in its many forms for generations to come. And the role forestry plays as an employer in the communities should not be underestimated. Under its modern apprenticeship scheme, it's safeguarding jobs such as these in the rural environment. Forestry Commission Scotland is a public body and, as such, the custodian of a very precious resource. <laughs>